Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I, 32, female, have a daughter of five. Her father, my ex-husband, E.H., is 33, male, and has been absent since the divorce. A little backstory about us. My husband and I were friends since high school, and at the beginning, we never really fought much about dating. But over the years, as we grew up, we started realizing that we had feelings for one another, and then we decided to act upon them. We started dating when we were 24 and 25 and got married two years later when I got pregnant with our daughter. We got married and it was a small ceremony with close family and friends. His mother, my mother-in-law, had always liked me since we were friends, so when we got married, she was the happiest for us. The wedding went well and we started our life as a married couple when cracks started to show. My husband was not open to taking care of the house. He would go to work, come home, and immediately glue himself to the TV screen, refusing to help out. I would understand his lack of helping around the house on weekdays, but it bothered me that he would refuse to help me out when it was weekends and I would be dusting the house or doing laundry or something along that line. But because he would not help me out, when there would be dust here or there, or I would forget to wash one thing or forget to take it all down from the clothesline at the right time, he would berate me. He would say that he works so hard all the time just to provide for me, and all he wants is a clean house to come home to. If I cannot maintain that, then maybe I should quit my job and start considering staying back home and taking care of the house for him because he earns enough for the both of us. That was obviously upsetting to hear, and when I made it clear, he did not bother apologizing to me. He simply told me that I am just being extra sensitive due to my hormones. When our daughter was born, my husband was busy complaining about his back pain while I was screaming in pain and told me to shut up because I was giving him a headache. My mother-in-law was there and she told him off, telling him that his back pain does not take precedence over my pain because I am bringing our child home and he needs to respect me more. Hearing her say those things made him grumpy and he did not bother staying back while our daughter was born. Once I came back home, he started becoming extremely hard on me. He wanted me to push myself harder even though I was on bed rest and because of my health issues. The doctor suggested I take rest after delivering for at least a month. But my husband did not bother doing that. We had fights every day because he wanted to come home to a squeaky clean house with me dolled up for him, which was simply not possible because I spent the whole day taking care of our daughter. And when she would nap, I would nap with her because she would keep waking up in the middle of the night, changing my sleep cycle. All of these things kept adding up, and by the time our daughter's third birthday rolled up, I knew that my husband was not happy with me. It was pretty evident that he was cheating on me as well. He would come home smelling of a particular perfume every day, and I found lipstick stains on his shirt as well. Knowing that my partner was much more interested in everything except me broke my heart, but I decided to talk to him about it. He did not even deny anything and told me that because I would only pay attention to our daughter and not him, he decided to go and get the attention somewhere else. He said that he does not want to be married to me anymore, and it would be great if I did not waste his time trying to do all the things people usually did. He explained how he had fallen out of love with me and does not find me attractive anymore, so he does not want to bother about it any further. It broke my heart, but I realized I was not going to beg someone to stay with me, especially when they did not want to stay with me themselves. Within the next few weeks, he prepared the papers, I signed them, and we were no longer together. I was a single mom with a three-year-old, and I had no idea how I was supposed to keep going forward. Now, coming to the reason I am making this post, I was lucky enough that my job paid me well and that I did not have to ask my EH for child support. Once the divorce was finalized, my EH just dipped for lack of a better word. He simply stopped existing in our lives. My daughter always looked up to him, so when he up and disappeared, she was extremely affected by it. As she grew up, she was worried that she was the reason why our relationship broke off and she was sure that her father hated her and that's why 
he was not here with us anymore. I would call my EH to figure out if there was a way he could keep being a part of my daughter's life, but he never pulled through. He would make plans with my daughter, but when it was time to show up, he was a no-show, and the disappointment was pretty evident. It was an amicable divorce, so I did not think that he was going to abandon us this way. However, when mother-in-law contacted me, and as she was very doting towards my daughter, I tried my best to keep the spirits up. I did not tell her anything about the situation because I did not want to speak ill of the father of my child. But my daughter told her grandma about her absent father in her way. I was not there when the conversation took place. I assume it happened at one of those grandma-granddaughter tea parties that mother-in-law has with her, and that night she called me up and asked me about everything. At first, I thought I would deny it, but when she told me that my daughter was blaming herself for the lack of her father, I decided to tell mother-in-law everything. I told her about the play dates that we arranged and he never showed up to, how he barely remembered her birthdays, and I also shared with my mother-in-law the reason why her son and I broke up. We always told everyone that it was just marital differences, but I told mother-in-law the truth. After that harrowing conversation, mother-in-law told me to take care of myself and my daughter and that she will do what is necessary. Two days after that, I got a very angry call from my EH screaming his head off at me, telling me that I need to teach my brat of a child to behave properly and not complain about stuff to mother-in-law. He assumed that I told our daughter to say those things to mother-in-law because I wanted to stir more drama, and even when I refused, he did not bother believing me. Once he was calm enough, he let me know that mother-in-law and father-in-law spoke with his grandparents and decided to hold back his inheritance until he starts showing up for my daughter. He did tell me about the inheritance he was supposed to receive from his grandparents when he would turn 35, but I didn't expect this to happen. He called me an a-hole and called me several other names as well as insulted my daughter. I feel so angry because my daughter isn't at fault. His mother decided to punish him, and that should be something he should talk to his mother about. Furthermore, he is in the wrong for even assuming he could stop being a father just because he stopped being my husband. I am infuriated with how childish he is, and I don't get how I'm supposed to feel. A lot of you had been wondering how we got married in the first place owing to how different we are as a whole, and the answer is opposites attract. His impulsiveness, his emotional outbursts, and his reluctance in everything were there when we were dating, but I saw them all in a positive light. I saw his impulsive nature in a good way. I considered emotional outbursts as bursts of passion. His reluctance was his ability to chill under every circumstance. I thought he was the coolest guy ever, and I suppose I thought he'd realize he was responsible eventually but that realization never happened for him. And every time I talked about it, he couldn't be bothered. He cheated on me with his co-worker who he is currently living with. As far as I know, he is supposed to take over the business after his grandparents. And the whole thing was supposed to happen when he was 35 because by then he would have a few years of experience under his belt. I have gone out of my way to make sure my daughter doesn't get to learn about these things because she doesn't deserve to feel like the only way her father will hang out with her is if there's money involved. I gave him way too many chances, I swear. He called me and said he wants to correct his relationship with his daughter and begged me to fix a date when they can hang out the entire day. I genuinely thought for a second that it would be a good idea and I allowed my daughter to go. Thank God that I had taught her how to recite my number if there's an emergency because one hour into the play date, I got a call. My EH had abandoned our child in the playing area at the mall and disappeared. My daughter panicked when she couldn't find her dad anywhere and went to one of the security people to get them to call me. I rushed to the mall and what do I find? My EH chatting casually with someone while my daughter was loitering about. I obviously grabbed her first and then approached him. When I accused him of abandoning the child, he shrugged and said nothing bad has happened to her so I shouldn't be so overwhelmed. It's not a big deal. I slapped him before I could have controlled myself and left. I have not spoken to him since then. 
Mother-in-law has called me and after learning the whole situation, she has decided to be harder on my EH because according to her, he needs a wake-up call. It has been about a month since my last update and this month has been very hard. Not only had EH abandoned my daughter, he even told her that she needs to tell her grandma that daddy was super nice to me and mommy was mean and lying about daddy. Not only did he abandon her, but he also asked her to lie on his behalf even though he never bothered doing the least bit for the sake of the children. Learning all of this made me so angry. I was fuming. I heard about mother-in-law and his grandparents agreeing on completely cutting him off from EH himself because he called me yet again and screamed loads at me. Tired of this whole situation, I blocked him on my phone and social media and informed mother-in-law about it. She was supportive because she refused to be associated with him. She told me that she wants to be in her granddaughter's life and she would hate to lose her and me just because of her son's stupidity. Having her support made me feel much more at peace with the whole situation and I have been doing my best to take care of myself as well as my daughter. I have put my daughter into therapy just to help her cope with everything that her dad put her through. So here's to hoping, to be honest. Man, your husband is such a huge a-hole. Like, who even does that? I cannot believe how he cheated on you while you were taking care of your child. Who does that? He belongs to the street. Just focus on yourself. This is just one side of the story, but based on how everything is put here, you are NTA. I do struggle to believe that your husband is this heartless, and even if he is this heartless, the signs were probably always there and you did not notice them. How can you date a man-child like him, or were you thinking that you would fix him over the years? You are TA for putting your daughter through this, though. Hi, I'm male 26 and my girlfriend Sarah, female 27. Yesterday was Sarah's birthday. A couple of weeks ago, she requested a sewing machine for her birthday gift. Even though she already had one that was not broken, I agreed to get it for her. Since I'm a guy who knows nothing about sewing, I spent a good two weeks of searching for a good model. In the end, I picked a brother's sewing machine along with some extra materials. Just when I was about to order it, I came across the Crycut Maker 3. For those who don't know, Crycut is something that can cut all kinds of things. Example, fabric, wood, paper, leather. It can even engrave metal. It is used to make DIY projects like stickers, bags, mugs, and necklaces. Since Sarah is very into crafting, I immediately thought she'd love it. In my opinion, it was way better than the sewing machine, since she already had one. Sure, the cry cut was double the price of sewing machine, nearly $1,000, but I had some money saved. After some research, I bought the cry cut with a heat press and other tools. I thought it would be an amazing birthday gift. I was about to tell Sarah that I didn't get the sewing machine, but knowing her, she would beg me to tell her what her new gift was. I wanted it a surprise, so I decided to keep it a secret. Fast forward to her birthday. Sarah was super excited. I gave her the present saying that I didn't get the sewing machine, but I got something even cooler. As I said those words, I could sense her disappointment, but she was trying to hide it. I suddenly felt really bad, but I hoped that she would like the cry cut. When she unwrapped the present, she looked even more disappointed. She said, thanks. I don't see why you couldn't get a sewing machine, though. It isn't hard to get one. I was kind of put off by her unappreciation, but I apologized anyway. Sarah continued, When you tell me what you want for your birthday, I get it for you. I didn't get you books when you said you wanted a kettle. I tried to explain what a cry cut could do, but she didn't really listen. She just pulled out her phone and Googled the price. When she found out I spent $1,000 plus on the present, she freaked out. She said that I could have got her four sewing machines for that price or that I could have simply taken her on holiday. This hurt me because I did put in a lot of effort in my gift. It's embarrassing, but I suddenly was on the verge of tears. I don't cry much, but I felt emotional at that moment. When Sarah saw that, she said, why are you crying? I do appreciate your present, but it's just you totally disregarded what I wanted. She left to give me some space, but we still had birthday dinner together. 
It was rather awkward, but we pulled it through. Fast forward to today, Sarah still hasn't touched her cry cut. It's almost like she's trying to make a point that I really wasted my money on something she wouldn't use. I do feel a bit like an a-hole because I did ignore what she wanted, but at the same time, I feel I had good intentions. A-I-T-A? Hi again. After reading all your comments, I realized that I was indeed an a-hole, but believe me when I say that one, I wasn't trying to guilt trip her for crying, and two, I didn't get the cry cut so she could make me things. However, I'll admit that I thought that the cry cut was cooler and bought it partly because of that. I was wrong because ultimately it's her gift, not mine. Thanks for all the responses. Since I already knew what model or materials to get, I just placed an order for the brother's sewing machine. It can only be delivered in a week's time, so I'm going to get some of her favorite food today to make up for it. I haven't returned the cry cut because all those add-ons would be tricky to return. I'm still deciding if I should keep it or not. Lastly, if you're wondering why I bought the cry cut, this was two years ago, but Sarah saw a machine similar to a cry cut in an art store and said that when she had more money, she would get it. Also, throughout the years, she has been interested in cutting wood and fabrics, but yes, I should have asked her first before splurging on this gift. Thanks again. YTA, you bought her something that she had no interest in because you thought it was cool and therefore she should use it. By the way, it's totally reasonable to own more than one sewing machine, especially when they have different features and can handle different types of projects, and to have them set up simultaneously to work on more than one thing at a time. You're upset because you decided what she should want, and she hasn't touched it too. You do understand that her not being interested in the thing she doesn't want isn't an attack, right? Her having her own mind and her own wants and not yielding to what you attempt to impose on her isn't being passive-aggressive. You bought her something she didn't want and decided for her what she needs. That's a-hole territory. She isn't a three-year-old. YTA, and presumably the issue is resolved by returning the cry cut and getting a sewing machine? A sewing machine is a very basic need for someone who wants a sewing machine. My mother had a sewing machine which she used quite a bit and would have had no need or interest in a cry cut because she had no interest in crafting, but actually sewing, i.e. making her own clothing, altering my clothing. She did quilting, but mostly did handwork for her quilting. While there are inexpensive sewing machines that work, the more expensive machines can do amazing stuff. At this point, return the cry cut and take your girlfriend along to actually pick out the machine she wants based on the amount you want to spend. If she loves to sew and actually uses the machine, it is the kind of thing in which it sometimes pays to spend for features that make advanced sewing techniques possible. YTA, do you think you discovered cry cut? I don't craft and I know what one is. They have been around for quite a while. You realize you completely mansplained what a cry cut is and why she needs one more than a sewing machine, right? Here is the problem. I get that you may not know about cry cut and thought it was a cool gadget, but why did you assume that she didn't know what one was or that she needed, wanted something she never mentioned before? Why do you think she doesn't need a new sewing machine when you don't sew and have specifically told you that is what she needs and wants? You aren't an expert on sewing or crafting, but you know better than her? She is pissed off because she listens to what you need, want, and respects it. You don't respect what she needs, wants, and think you know better. I'm guessing this isn't the first time you have done this, nor is this kind of arrogance and dismissive behavior limited to gift-giving.